Hey, welcome to Bass and Bonsai. Let me just clear this little stuff out here. Oh boy, look at that. Guess what? My hands, they look all right. Yesterday I tried to do a live stream and I had horrible, something was going on, like that was totally interrupted. Tried it with Wi-Fi without, horrible. But welcome to Bass and Bonsai. We are back in the house and we have new technology. Not really. This is the old GoPro that came with, uh, the new one came with this thing. But I just wanted to show you guys. Then we're going to do an AliExpress unboxing. We're going to talk about the rods that are supposed to be here today, but they haven't made it yet. But I don't have time to wait because I need to start getting this fishing gear put away. So I got this. It came with uh, the new GoPro. And I might be able to use it with this one because I'll explain what's going on with this dude. And I could still maybe capture some underwater footage with this. So anyway, and I don't know if it'll transfer through or not. I don't know if you guys can make out. Look how beat up. See how that lens? It's got a, it, there's a little chip I put in it a while back. And so every once in a while, it'll leave blurry images. But this GoPro is beat to heck for the last four or five years. And I bought it used. This GoPro has been putting in the work. Still works, but this button doesn't work or work right. Like you just never know. And it gets harder and harder to turn on and off. Well, what I can still do is if you just hit, if you don't know about the GoPros, if you just hit that top button, it, it, it gives, it has a little delay, but it, it'll kick on and start recording. So it's still set like that. So I could actually have it in there, out hanging off the side of the boat, and, you know, just decide I want to record underwater or just something in a different angle for a few minutes. And I can utilize it like that still technically. <laughs> But then I have to take the SD card out, put it in this one to get it downloaded. But So we picked up a brand new one <laughs> that's brand new used. See, it's got some scratches on the screen. But this is just what I've used uh, since I started using GoPros was the Hero 4 Silver. And because it has a screen on the back, it'll let me kind of instant replay footage just to make sure I got something or whatever. So anyway... I uh, and I use it. I like it on in this thing. So this one broke. This they come like where you have to pull it up and slide it in. And this is the external. Which in the first year or so, you probably heard some different wind noise. And then once I picked up this thing, it's the coolest one I've found so far. Anyway, the ceramic comes with this little uh, rabbit nut. You put it on it, rabbit balls, and. It basically takes out all that. It enhances, I feel, my voice, but it takes away some of that background and definitely the wind noise and stuff. But So if you guys don't know about GoPros, let's just get a quick little rundown. This thing is awesome. You just turn it on, and then you can see... Uh, what you're doing, right? So you can record, you can see what's going on, you can uh, go back... And check it, make sure everything's working to where a lot of the... And I'm not sure how they've advanced over the newer ones, but I had a GoPro 3, and I think Emily has that now. And it was just not good. It didn't have that thing. I just... I like these, and you can get them cheap. I picked this one up for $100. Came Didn't come with an SD card, but came with a battery and some other miscellaneous things. Nothing I really needed. They, they were as cheap as $69 for refurbished ones, but... I think now they have like a GoPro 11 or something. But so anyway, here's what. And I have one. I've had this for like a year now. But it is, it is actually so much harder to set and try to pop this up and push this in there. Because then you have to take it out and switch batteries. What I found out is so cool that works. Is once it broke, it made it easier. You just put it together. And then when you clip it in, the harness, you know, to hold it and put the screw in. It holds it together just fine so it actually it works better broken and then this is just my backup in case that one were to completely go wrong so anyway that's a little rundown on the gopro uh and if you're wondering well why didn't you just upgrade well i don't even know how much the new like a, it's an 11 black or something now right but i still have all of these batteries that are still perfectly fine i can go for i have the capability of fishing for a whole entire like 12 hours probably or maybe even more and get all of that footage and it just does everything I need it to do and I I feel it's good quality anyway the 
I, I'm actually, I slowed down on what I was recording at. It's like a 180 super wide view compared to 4K now. It, it actually just comes out better in through the editor and stuff I use. So anyway, that's a GoPro rundown. So anyway, I got news. Before we do an unboxing, and I'm just going to give you guys a shout out now so you'll hear it and know about it. This reel right here, in my opinion, I know it's bougie and it's very expensive, but that's the best reel that I've ever owned, I feel, that's ever made. Now, is it better than a zillion? No, because it's twice as much money and a zillion will do everything that reel will do, 100%. It's just that's a cooler way to do it. So what did I do? Well, you guys know I sold Matt, my one of my zillions. I had two of them, so I was getting ready to sell him another one. But I just like I was like messaged him I'm like, no, I'm keep so I'm keeping the other zillion. But what I did do today, it popped up on Digitaka. This is a shallow spool, and so it is eight five ratio. You can't get that's the only thing you can get. You can get left to right eight five comes with a shallow spool. I just happened, I don't even know what made me, I was on Digitaka, and I actually clicked the wrong button. I was going to see because they raised the price on these on Digitaka. They went from like 68,000 yen to like 700,000 or something. So I was like, I was checking to see what the little exchange rate was, debating on if I wanted to get another one of these. Because the Limited, which is a deeper spool SV boost, but a 7, I believe it's 7121, not 75, I think it's 71 has like I, I thought they'd quit making them they just made the shallow well one was popped up the right hand uh on digitaka said you know one left so boom guess who bought it yeah so i have that one coming kind of because it's a different gear ratio uh i if you guys don't know i i've got enough 20 pound braid on this and i can cast a three quarter ounce rattle trap about as far as you'd want to cast or actually as far as about as far as this reel can cast it anyway on the rods I use it just runs out of line with the 20 pound but I also got some blue line should be in this unboxing we're going to do that's supposed to be a little bit smaller diameter 18 pound test that I'll probably end up maybe putting on this if I put put on one of the blue rods but I'll probably leave this for now so we have another one coming because uh me and brew tank were talking and if you haven't watched it the real test just did a test uh comparing you know is the boost does it work? Does it not work? You know, whatever. And this boost thing is like a nightmare. I'll talk about it in a minute. But, you know, he's, I, like, in a sense, there's no doubt in my mind, you guys will, you can, and I would agree right now, I'm a Daiwa guy at the moment. If you were here a couple years ago, I was a Shimano guy. Uh, what made me go back to Daiwa? Basically the boost thing. I think it does help. I think you got to learn how to, it's like, a, it takes a hard cast to really get the boost to work right. Now, this HLC thing don't work right for me. But we'll talk about that in a minute. But if you watch the real test video I just put out, he was seeing what the boost, if it did a difference or not. Well, then he put up a Tatula, long cast Tatula, which is kind of like what this is. And for what he's doing, the results were exactly what you would expect. The, the real design, I don't care if it's a $200 reel or $800 reel. If it's designed for long casting and you're trying for maximum distance, it did what it did. The Tatula beat the others by, and it wasn't by a bunch of feet. The Zillion with boost beat the Steez SV, which uh, doesn't have boost. So he was trying to say, like, it's, well, it's kind of inconclusive. Well, what I see is it did exactly what it said it would do. The new boost spools give you a little more distance over uh, whatever they're on. So if it's a regular, uh, spool that is an SV it should get let you get just a touch more you can cast just a little harder at the very beginning and have the brakes overall set just a little bit looser it's not the you know end all to all problems but when you have a SV spool they are slightly over brake but that's not it because you don't need maximum distance that's for ease of use and operation so when they added the boost I feel it, it gave you the best of both worlds you can get out there fling a bait out but yet it's it's a controlled deal but if you guys watched this me doing the test and uh brew tank can tell you that uh i just sold him the bantam that's an awesome casting reel also but in the test i did with my zillion i put it up against all the baron 30 when i first got it mgl and it beat it on the high end three quarter ounce and two gram bait for 100 percent for sure no doubt in my mind now the half ounce it was kind of 
at the time I wasn't doing you know foot to foot it was very hard to tell throwing like a half ounce jerk bait and I did have one cast I will tell you 100% that Alabama 30 sent one time it sent that jerk bait like insanely far I don't I could not get it to repeat that exact distance though but then when I put the Bantam up against the uh, Zillion I could not get the Bantam to beat the Zillion the, and that's the older one 2018 they claim the newer one has a little longer you know line guide sticks out a little longer uh, it's got a millimeter longer spool so longer casting especially bigger baits it should be a better caster than the older one but trust me when you're casting 150 to 165 feet unless you're extremely you know uh, deep diving crankbait type stuff that five foot don't make any difference unless you are deep diving cranking and it still don't make that big a difference just move your boat up five feet and then cast again. So, in my opinion, the I don't go by, you know, if one will beat the other one. Now, this dude, oh my God. This hyper long cast pile of junk. Here's what I did to it, though. I, I still like the reel. I don't like the spool at all. I tried to get out and get used to it, just leaving it alone, trying to adjust on this, trying to, you know, turn the brakes up. And, and I can get out there and use it, but it's one of those, I don't like to always have to worry about, I got to thumb the spool. So it, and it, it doesn't create like a, it's annoying what it is, what it is. Like, so y'all yeah, cast it hard and it's fine. Cast it hard. And then I just want to, I just want to go 40 foot over here. I just want to cast 40 foot in this little spot. And if I'm not in my head remembering that this is a reel I have and I don't like cast, you know, lob it but but make sure i ride my thumb on the spool it'll and it doesn't really hurt that the what it happens is the braid catches itself because it starts to fluff up catches itself and then doink it stops short of where i was aiming i gotta like redo you know and reel back in and then go again so it's just a nightmare but so what i did today or what i'm gonna show you what i did i did it the other day is i took out so if you remember, this thing was sitting down in there pretty good, and it actually goes the other way. So there's two springs to make up the boost thing, right? There's the boost spring on the outside, and then the normal one on the inside. So it still has the capability to, when you cast real hard, it'll come out further. But it's kind of a fixed inductor on the other part. Because all I did was simply, I popped that pin back out. If you guys watch that fiasco, I found the one on the zillion. I got it all put back together. But on this reel, took it back apart. Uh, I took the regular, I guess I'd call it, the longest spring, not the boost one, and I put it on on first, and then I put the inductor on, and then pushed everything back in. So it technically can even go in a little, just because it's got a little springiness to it. So that spring is now holding the inductor rotor out, so uh, it should have plenty of braking, but I can still have even more braking. I, so I should be able to get out. I haven't even tested it yet. We'll find out this weekend. I didn't get time to get out and test it this, through the week. So we're going to see what that does. If that doesn't fix it, I'm putting it back together the right way, and it's going it's going bye-bye. I'm going to list it when I list, list the Conquest uh, BFS on eBay, and I'll just let it ride, and whatever I lose, I lose, because I'm tired of having... Now, somebody... I know you guys are saying I can get that spring whatever deal and all that, but I think I'll just sell it and I'll go full uh, magnesium steezes. I'm just to that point. All right, we'll put this together later. I got to get these things ready to go fishing anyway. Feel free to comment who's ready for an unboxing. So, uh, update I have no idea. It showed that the uh, Zillion 10, it came from AliExpress, if you remember. It, sh it shows up in country, basically, but then the tracking stopped like a week ago. So, I don't know, sure where it's at. The two rods that I ordered that are the Wizards, they're kind of like copies of an NRX, but with uh, blank material, sort of like the uh, X-Prides. They're showing that they'll be delivered today, but they're just not here yet. So, all this other stuff is uh, packages that have mainly baits that have come from Aliexpress and some handle knob stuff. So let's just start and see what all we got because then I gotta get this stuff opened up and like ready to whatever I decide I want to use anyway. Oh boy, look out guys. Let me just move this out of the way before I hurt somebody. Or some reel. So it was nice that the GoPro managed, it made it 
from eBay in a very timely manner and we can get back out with the record because I wasn't 100% sure what I was going to do other than just like I talked about hitting that button and stopping and going for the best. All right, package number one came shipped all by itself. They didn't box it with other stuff or anything. It came all the way, poor little guy, all the way from China by himself. Let's open him up, take a look. I, I, you guys know how the deal on how long it takes to get. I don't even remember what I gave for this little dude. I know... If you guys know me in the channel, it wasn't that expensive, probably like three bucks. So this should have, oh, that I didn't even pay attention in the picks. So we got a light little weed guard, if you guys can make that out. Got a little weed guard up here, it's a very soft weed guard. Almost like not even really having one. But it may let it deflect a little. There is no no sign of any way to keep the bait on there's no bait keeper whatsoever so you just put your soft plastic on and pray right now what you could do is it looks like if you took the skirt off and you just wanted to run it you know with a some kind of swim bait and you know not like a little swim jig with an underspin but what made me get this thing is because it does come with this little almost like a cable uh, underspin, right? So it's a little swim bait underspin. I got it just a few dollars just to try them. If I, if I get out there and I'm really doing good with this, the, I'm starting to use AliExpress as kind of my gateway to the higher end stuff. If I really get something that really works good, that's almost like a knockoff or they make a very good quality one, I possibly will upgrade to the other one. If this one like, I feel like it works good, but say it falls apart just too easy. You know what I'm saying? If it, if it feels like it, it's not going to last that long, and I need to upgrade to the higher end one. So, the hook is sharp. I think everything will be good for the way I fish. And I plan on, I don't really plan on throwing this around like heavy cover. I plan on just throwing this out and kind of swimming it anytime I think that, you know, that I need something a touch more subtle. Anytime you would use a swim bait over a chatter bait or a spinner bait or something, that's one option to try. So I figured I'd pick one up to try it. Let's go with our next little. Now here was one. These were packaged together. This one and where's the other one going? Well, I don't know. I thought there was two of them here. Let's see what we got here. Oh boy. Here comes the hammers. I think these are just, are these more Jackie hammers? No, these are my, uh, these are our jigs. <laughs> it says chatterbait. That is not a chatterbait. So you can tell the same people that are making the Jackie hammers. They call that a joint jig. That's a chatterbait. And then the chatterbait ones have just the jigs in them. So I just got some different jigs to try out. Right, go a little above the Rogers ones that are only a dollar when you buy 10 at a time. The finesse ones go with some football. So I bought one more. I'm not gonna buy any more chatterbaits until I lose half of what I bought because I have a whole tackle box full of them. So just if you guys are just now first time you've spotted uh, me talking about these uh, kind of basically these are uh, jackhammer knockoffs some of them are called jackie hammers some of them aren't called anything but the 3 8 ounce which i usually started getting here lately i like the way they work better they typically have a little bit smaller hook than the normal jackhammers in 3 8 or half the 3 8 ounce of these so i wanted to get a red one and I might put orange trailer or whatever, and that bite may be slow, but there's just times, right, when a red one will do some damage. So that one was cheap also. And I'm just going to, I don't think I'm going to open all these right now. We'll open one that will be easy to, probably this one will be easier to see what it's made up of. But the colors, you guys can see there's kind of that uh, chatterbait colors that I kind of like in these uh, 
AliExpress ones, and then of course black and blue, right? You, you gotta have a black and blue, and I do have a black and blue spinnerbait coming. That is one thing I hardly ever use is a black and blue spinnerbait. I think I have one or two little ones. So let's just look at this jig and see if it's anything worth talking about. And I can tell you right now, it's, eh, some of you guys think it's not the greatest. Definitely a lighter, like it should not take, I wouldn't call, this is just a football style, like to be thrown out to where, I wouldn't throw this around any, really, this isn't like a cover jig type thing, throwing around any kind of cover. I can tell you right now, the weed guards come off kilter from the, see that? So you, you can spread these out a little bit, and that's definitely what you want to do. I, the trick is don't pull up. You kind of, so this one I'd want to push out and up that way. Kind of like that. You you can uh, you can manipulate them to help them get them you know closer to where they are, and they'll kind of move on their own. But that's probably how I'll fish it, and I'll probably cut it down too. Though, like, see, you want them to go. You want this up here to end right about your barb. So if you can see, those go well past the barb. So you don't need all that extra. It's not really going to be doing anything for you. It just will hinder. It, you know, it's just something that could that higher up could um, just make a fish not want to hit it. So it it won't hurt like the if the fish does bite it, it shouldn't interfere. But I always like to just cut mine down to right about there, and then have them spread out like I showed you. If it's like these are off a little bit, you can kind of manipulate it when you push. So yeah, these. I can't remember exactly how much they were. They were not that expensive. Give them a shot. And you guys know me. I throw my jigs on. I might use them like a swim jig. I might use them like whatever. And these are like sacrificial. I don't have much money in them. Even though it doesn't have the greatest weed guard, I still will, won't be afraid to just toss it anywhere. And, you know, in any kind of cover, any kind of situation that I think I might get a bite, right? Okay, so here is our biggest package. They came all bundled together. And there's a bunch of little bitty individual packages. So there's one, two. We got two big and two little packages that were all bundled up in this mess from AliExpress. And I'm going to use it for a trash bag. I throw all my other stuff in. Let's start with the smallest one. A little bitty dude here. This is this might take a while. Anybody want to say something? Say hi or anything. There's three or four of you watching. I know Jay and Brew Tank and everybody else can be late for the show. I think if I don't do these early, like everybody gets home and it slows down the Wi-Fi and the internet or something around here, and you got to get them done. Ah, that is a hook sticking out, and it got me. Oh boy! Woo! Look at that jerk chatter swim. Oh, game over, guys. Game over. Right there. I saw this. You guys comment if you've ever fished, used, seen this contraption before. I saw these, and if a guy that claims he's a chatterbait fisherman does not at least try this for himself, it's stuck. The hooks are good. I can't get it loose. Then, you know, can you really say that you're a chatterbait aficionado? Right? You're not chatterbait bougie unless you've tried everything that has a blade attached to it. Like the, look at that huge honking connector they got. I see this thing just catching, yeah. This thing is going to need some work. Basically that paint, I'll have to clean it off. And I'll need to figure out a way to crimp that to where there's no way. Because this blade is close to being able to pop off. And you can see how it gets stuck because of the paint. So not the greatest uh, quality control, but I will throw it and see if it works. Just a little chatter minnow. And I'll try it just like that. It was one of those that was cheap enough. Get it, try it. If I feel it works, and you know, I'm not talking about getting hit. If I feel it like you can throw it out, cast it, and it, you know, looks kind of okay in the water, I will give it a shot. If it just looks too nasty, it'll just be bye-bye. It'll be throwing that stuff over there, baits that a lot of them do work, but I just don't have room in my tackle box for it. But I figure I'd give it a shot. All right, the sec 
second next biggest package is this dude right here. And these should be just regular jerk baits, I think. Let's see, make sure I ain't got no freebies coming. They didn't send me up. Uh, you guys have seen that fishing club. They I must order from them a lot. They always send me stickers that I never use. What do we have? Ooh. Ooh, Meredith Realist. Not a duo. Meredith. Deep diving jerk baits that eh, they don't look horrible, but they were cheap, and I thought I'd try them. I can tell you right now, I probably will hardly ever fish that deep a jerk bait. But I figured I'd have them in case somebody gets on a jerk bait bite with the deeper ones. Uh, these are I would call these probably like the Similar to a Vision 110 Plus 2 or whatever these Realis ones, they're the deep divers. I'm not even going to pull one of those out. I will, however, get them out and put them in my box. You know what? Let's pull one out. That's just a white one. Looks like it's white all over. Kind of like a... Kind of like an oyster color. I actually like the color. I just don't know if I'm going to like these. I've never been a fan, even though I've never even bought the... the Vision 110 plus two. I like the Junior plus one, but the Stacy 90, I haven't really found my little groove with it yet. I feel it, I don't know. I just don't think I figured out the right time and place and how to work these deeper diving jerk baits. I like the, you know, just a standard one better. But they already got it hooked up the way I like. So I just want to open it to yeah, it's got a big thud of a ball I can feel. So it'll definitely cast pretty good. And we'll just try it and see what it does. And as uh, What's-His-Face at the Hookup Tackle puts it, if any of these speak to you, uh, I probably won't be sharing links unless somebody really asks for a link. What in the world? So the next to the biggest package has a bunch of what did I order oh my god these are all soft baits I think they, oh, they gave me a sticker what did they give me oh that's cool I actually like that sticker no it's B and B they messed up I don't know what B and U is but that's actually a cool sticker I will put that somewhere or I'll give it to Charles to put on his boat somewhere Charles, remind me to gather up whatever stickers I got. Okay, so out of the frying pan and into the fire, we go with, and these are also knockoff baits, and I don't think they're any bigger than the other ones I already have. So I've heard these are good. So far, I have used this style, and I have not had any luck yet. Why did I get two of everything? And I'm pretty sure I don't do that. I had this happen to me before. Sometimes they just double up the colors. Because I'm pretty sure I wouldn't have ordered two of each color. Unless that's a different size. Is that a different size? Let me check. They say these are 3.5 inch, 88 millimeters. These are the exact same. And I know me. I don't order two baits that I'm testing of the same exact color. Oh, I see what they did. For some reason, there's three here, three there, and these are bundled six and six. So, it must have come six each, and I don't know why, but they had them separated. So, that's what that is. That looks like a good color. That color should catch them. That color looks good. Actually, that color looks good, too. Worst case scenario, I'll try to rig these onto just the back of an actual jig or something if they don't work by themselves. Yeah, that, that's a good color too. All these colors look good. I just don't know about these little flappity baits. <sighs> they definitely are not fitting in. I may make up a little just a sample box of like one of each color to take out because I definitely cannot fit all that in my uh, tackle box. And now for the mother load. All right, there's four of you watching. Come on. We're half hour into what could be a forever night deal. If I had any fireball, I'd be taking shots. I don't have any fireball, though. So here is the biggest one, and this should be all... I don't know what this should be. Oh, I think this is swim baits. 
soft plastic sandbag type thing. It is like double, okay, double wrap. Triple wrap. Let's just get into the heart of this. Okay, we got some more stickers here. Same fishing place. These are not wrapped with the others. So you guys remember Meredith Bates. I, I have actually bought some of these two, three years ago and used them somewhat. This color right here, actually, for whatever reason, that color does work very good. Uh, I don't even know why I got these. They must have been real cheap. That color looks and does work good, but that color so far out of the Meredith Bates, that's my favorite color. That just It just works when that water's a little dirty. And I'll get one out here in a minute. Hang on. And then this color, yeah, I think this color is the one I, it works and I ran out of it fairly quick, I think. So it may be the best color, then that other green color works good too. Some of these baits aren't wrapped up. Oh, there's a bunch of other stuff in there. So that's what they did. They put the soft baits around the hard baits. So yeah, this color I was hoping would be even lighter than it is. That's kind of that. If you guys can make it out, like a bluish. So yeah, all these colors are actually good. Maybe a little bit bigger. Let's pull one out of the package. They're all the same bait, just different uh, colors. I don't think they're scented. Let me smell it first. Mm, I don't think they are. I mean, they don't smell bad, but I don't smell anything really. So just, uh, I think these are three, three inch maybe. Very good, uh, where's a chatterbait or something? If you wanted to, run them on the back of a chatterbait, they're probably just big enough to run on the back of chatterbaits, of these, or your smaller chatterbaits, maybe not a full on big one, or just on, I use them just on that, that you know, jig head kind of by itself or on the little uh, underspin weedless they're actually small enough you could rig them up like on a drop shot or something it's kind of swim in a drop shot deal anyway these are were pretty cheap and they're pretty durable baits from Meredith Baits I want to say they were I don't even remember I'm not going to even give you prices because I have no clue. I don't remember what they were. They were definitely on sale. This, All this, the reason there's so much, everything was on sale. They are having that sale, and I bought a bunch of baits just to try out that I didn't even need. So, yeah, they had all those kind of bundled up around this bundle of hard baits that should all be jerk baits in our jerkbait bite a jerkbait bite in my mind oh that's a rattle trap should never totally go away but they definitely come and go that is a big rattle trap jesus who ordered those so here that color is more orange than i thought it would be there's a good white one and these are definitely cheap enough they could be a sacrifice bait throw them in where you're even you know cheaper than a Strike King, right? Red Eye Shad, but if you're needing that big. And these are more like a subtle one knock. That thing is huge. I don't know if you guys can see how big that is. Uh, full on, at least like a three quarter ounce Booyah hard knocker size, roughly. They call it Realis. Lures with an attitude. Jerk bait revolution. I told you it was a jerk bait. You guys don't know what you're talking about. No. You gotta hand it to China, is all I'm gonna say. Meredith Bates. Gotta hand it to them. So, definitely, if there's a time, big bait but more subtle than a normal loud. 
one knot kind of deal. That color I do not like. Watch it be an awesome color. I really, I don't like that color, but I will try it. But I like this. I mean, just, you can't hardly go wrong with just a white bait. It does look made good. Like, the eyes look cool. The paint, like, it seems good. It says Meredith on top. Hooks are... Actually, the hooks... I mean, they're sharp. Of course, they're most all new hooks feel sharp right off the bat. That is not good. Look how little split rings they got. The only good thing about that is if I get snagged up, I should be able to yank it off and get the bait back without the treble hook. But yeah, I run, like if you guys do want some of these and you track them down, you are drag tight, you know, I would, looking at that, I would say I would be worried about 15 pound test for sure, yanking that thing, straightening that little split ring out. Like 10 pound and less, which is a big bait. So I'll probably try to, before I even fish these two, I'll probably try to switch those out, just even for me. Yeah, those little, I don't know if you guys can make those out. Like, they aren't much. Like, this is like a little 10-pound test kind of bait. You know what I'm saying? Like, very little finesse -y. And those split rings are about the same size. Yeah, like, these may be a touch bigger, but yeah, they, they goofed on that one. They definitely need a bigger uh, split ring holding them treble hooks on. But other than that, I mean, and that's not really a hard, like me, I don't, I, I have like a bunch of extra ones laying around, so won't be a problem. So then going off these deep diving ones, uh, I guess I couldn't get them from the same place. I tracked down, basically I have some colors in, uh, I don't even know if, So these are a little different size for some reason. They say they are anyway. Okay, these are the same, 100. And then I've got some, uh, some 115. So these are 100 size, and then these are 115s. I guess we should take one of each out. Why did I get two of almost the exact same color? Look at that. It's the same thing except for that. I mean, they're a little different, but those are going to do the same thing. If one of those will work, so will the other one. That color looks good. I mean, this color looks good, but... I guess they're... they're yeah, they're going to do about the same thing. I think that color... I like a little better. It's got a little more like a, just a chartreuse streak down it. This one's just got that almost... Not quite chartreuse, but like the head. So let's take out this one so we can see what their difference is in them and compare it with. I don't really know if I like the colors on any of this color I'd like. And that's not a bad color. They're all more naturally. There's like, they kind of tried to copy the Mega Bass color but they they didn't really get it quite right but these should work like they should be if you get on where there's a jerk bait bite going on these will catch fish will they catch as many fish as a good jerk bait who knows so we got a 100 right there and let's compare it so those are just two hooks we just compare the overall size and then we'll get on to other stuff. And then I'll get out of here because I still got to take a shower, get cleaned up. And yeah, I really need to get on editing some videos for you guys. I've got two weekends worth of out fishing and catching them. So that is definitely... I'm guessing these are the duo copies, basically. So I think we ended up with about the only three styles they have. They've got a deep diver, a kind of standard, close to, you know, like a 110, and then a, they're calling that a 115, and this is a 110, I don't know. Definitely three different jerk baits. That thing's got, 
I guess those other two. There's three big balls for the weight transfer. You see that? So I imagine throw it out and you pull it down. Those should go back, and then you get a. Now this one's definitely noisier. See that? Smaller but way noisier. Ah, the hooks have got me. Yeah, so these bigger ones are definitely noisier. Okay, that is a lot bigger. Let me see that. So yeah, if you see these two, it's got a bigger bill, but this is a bigger bait. Bigger jerk bait. And this is probably just a little smaller than like a Vision 110. <laughs> All right, so let's get these out of the way. Let's put it this way. My jerkbait buying days are over until I start losing jerkbaits and figure out what's what. And, you know, I'm not going to replace the ones if I feel they have, haven't done me any good. They will not get replaced. The ones I still have, I'll replace. And if you guys haven't noticed, and you probably haven't seen the footage yet, the... Uh, I bought Jackal Rerange. I like, I like those... Uh, those jerk baits are cool. They work and they make this crazy like loading sound. Sounds like a little 22 short uh, going off when you rear back and cast them. They're pretty cool and seem to work. I wouldn't say they're better than a Vision 110, but they're they're right there in the same ballpark. Uh, if you watch Tactical Bass and he talks about he likes them better when he's doing more erratic stuff. Cold dead of the winter, real cold water. You can't beat a Vision 110, but these uh, a lot of these other baits they just typically. What is that? Ooh, there showed up before the reel. That is the, uh, can you guys read that? Now it says 2018 to Tula, but I'm pretty sure this is the uh, drag clicker from my Zillion 10 before the reel even showed up. Because it came from AliExpress too. If it would have came from Digitaka, it would have been here three weeks ago. Let's keep going. And those, I want to say they were, and I did order, I have got the other Stees, uh, the regular Stees Limited. And I ordered two more drag clickers. So we'll be putting the drag clicker in the other one like we did our cello spool Limited. And I got room for another one. Okay, here, and I already have like two of these, but I got another one of those just because they were on sale and cheap. And I already have that in like two of that color and a couple other colors but then i got a couple different colors because these rattle traps do work these are definitely ones just throw them around don't worry about it they're cheap they will catch fish and i just want to get a couple different colors and that color does not look good to me in person and you can always uh paint these yourself if you want like consider it if you want to just do something they're cheap enough i think actually kind of like that color maybe try it Look at that, though. It's clear. It shows you where the balls are. Look at that. Let's see. So, yeah. This little bait surprised me for as cheap as they are, and it, they do catch fish. That's the bait. I caught four bass, and then I went ahead and tried the... Because uh, we were in that real snaggy pit. Uh, the off-road park down in Clinton's public access area. Anybody can go fishing. There's brush piles, berry. They're just... You're going to hang baits up. So I threw that dude and managed to catch four bass. And then I threw the uh, Quake 70, caught another bass. But it was definitely a cold, almost muddy type, you know, murky water. And that dude was on. So, yeah. If you're like, I don't like rattle traps, I'm not buying any. Trust me, just at least buy those and try those. You're not going to lose anything. They're very cheap, like $1.50, $2 a piece. Definitely get the white one and maybe one or two other colors. You will catch fish with them. I promise you. This box, holy Jesus. Look at this thing. It like almost didn't make it. I don't know what it got caught in, but it almost didn't make it to me. That's how easy it was to open that. So we got more of this. You guys have already seen this line. I just went ahead and stocked up on 18 uh, in the blue. I think I got 18, or did I get 20? No, I got 18. So I just got two more things of that angry fish. 
in the blue. And then Charles, after I had this like last weekend, Charles pops up with uh, some other brand, a little bit darker blue. But that's okay. I'll throw those over there. All right, one more package. Stick with me and then we'll get out of here and we'll talk about something. What did my friends at Kawa send me? Oh, these should be my blue knobs that I thought I needed, but then I ended up, I don't think I'm gonna need that many. Charles, you wanna buy some blue knobs? They're gonna be the same price I paid for them, Charles, which I think, I think these, I remember the price, like $10 a pair, I think. Okay, so I was hoping that was a reel, but I figured it was a knobs. So I ordered, okay, here they separated out for me. So each set they come with, if you guys are unfamiliar with these knobs, they give you all, like, you know, you get bearings and everything. So all these sets of bearings, and no, they're not great bearings, but yeah, they work, they're fine. Their bearings are not bushings, at least you get something. So I ordered these singly. It was cheaper instead of buying them by the pair. Like I, my first ones were, I was getting them like 10 bucks a pair and these were like three or $4 a piece. Anyway, they were cheaper to buy them singly to make pairs. They're the same thing, like the ones I always use. Um, the Constant Peasant, he says that the reels look funky once you put these on them, but these are actually good looking ones. I like these, that's what this dude right here has on it same thing uh, very firm comfortable uh, feel feels like something solid but not too big not too funky if you've got little smaller low profile reels they just look very good I like them they look and work and feel and they're cheap so if you guys don't know about these Unfortunately, they make a gray color similar to, well, not quite like that, but it's always out of stock. They make the purple ones. I don't really like the way they look. They look all right. And then they make uh, green, well, right here. They make this color, this color, that, and then like a gray color like this, but I had to make these myself, and the ones I made them out of aren't quite as long as these. These still feel good too, but you got to do work to get them to that. They will start out big. They usually buy just like the way they are, very cheap, uh, come with bearings. They do fit on Daiwa and both Daiwa or Shimano uh, handles, or you just get an AliExpress handle. Very, very good deal in my opinion. What did I do? Where did I throw them? All right, that is it. We are done. I'm gonna get off here, get stuff going. I've still gotta get these two reels rigged up on rods. I'm gonna, I'm kinda holding out, hoping, waiting to see if those other rods show up because I'll probably put these two on those and I'll leave my, uh, I still got the zillion. I have it on the fake black. Oh yeah, before I get out of here, that has nothing to do with what I just talked about. But like last night, I was trying to put together a rod and reel like combo video, what I recommend if, you know, if you want to go on a series of rods or reels for that matter, whatever, or the some you can get together like the Corrado's you can get rod and reels matched up if you want to do that or should you go with a uh, duck it should you well not necessarily duck it but like duck it would technically be an option for rod but Dobbins for rods or should you go full bougie and go mega bass or should you go bougie on a bougie on a budget and go Shimano X prides or the mega bass uh, Orochi series stuff like that that didn't work out. It'd take too long to try to throw it together here. I'm not going to talk about that. But what I will talk about is just a few of the things. Go to Tackle Warehouse. If you guys, the Fate Black, uh, I've heard Matt Allen talking about it. You guys have seen the one I've used. Uh, and I called it right off the bat for 79 bucks. Awesome rods. I've, I've struggled with hookup ratios because I was trying to use mine like with for chatterbaits. And it's not the greatest chatterbait rod, but it is an awesome rod. The exact one I have, a uh, six foot seven medium, uh, is the one Matt Allen talks about being good for. Uh, he uses them for small top water stuff, poppers and stuff. The uh, Gene Jensen uh, is kind of sponsored by Thirteen Fishing, but he talks. He has several of the fake blacks, and he likes how good they are. Well, Tackle Warehouse, I guess, is closing them out. There's probably a new model coming or something, 
So if you guys are thinking about one of those, jump on there and look. I believe uh, it's basically $20 off any of them. So if the ones that are $79 are now $59 and so on and so forth. And if it wasn't for the fact I've got all these other things going on, I would probably get a few more just to have because they're, I feel for $59, bucks, you definitely can't go wrong. They got the soft touch real seat. Uh, they're just they're just good rods for that price. At seventy nine dollars, they're a good deal. At fifty nine dollars, they're a very good deal. So just check that out if you're in the market for fishing rods. And there's several other things I noticed that Tackle Warehouse is uh, selling cheap. Oh, the uh, they just came out and they already show a clearance price of ten ten ninety nine. The gold bladed uh, Thunder Crickets, right? Now there's a real cool looking kind of like a bony uh yellowish one with the blue eyes. That thing I I should probably I don't need any more. I didn't even need this dude. I should probably jump on there and go and buy one for ten bucks. Just to I have not personally myself I've never bought a Thunder Cricket. I use the one Matt had, just we you know, we're back and forth handing each other our, you know see what they felt like I, I think it was one of these knockoffs I was telling them oh here show you know see how it thumps or whatever so I fished a thunder cricket but I've never went and purchased a thunder cricket I've been in the knockoffs of the z-man ones or the z-man originals or the little micros and minis and all that kind of stuff so it's a possibility you may see me just get a couple thunder crickets to just all have them to try like I feel you cannot have too many varieties of chatterbaits, just in case, right? I have way too many. I have a problem with chatterbaits. And I have too many blue knobs now because I only have, there's going to be four. I already have, what do I have now? I've got two pairs already. So there's three pairs four pairs that's all i probably need because i got the other two rods coming they could use this but i could also put cork on those because they have cork handles so that's two there three four five so i just picked up five more pairs and only needed two so that'll leave me with three extra even if i ended up putting those on uh, reels that i'm putting on these uh, wizards that are coming which i'm thinking i might want to go full cork right so anyway any questions? No. Good. I can't wait for the Zillion 10 to get here now. And then I already ordered... Uh, I've got some kind of like Mega Bass knockoff spinnerbaits coming. Along with a drag clicker. Two drag clickers. One for the Steez Limited I've got coming. And then I might get a regular Steez SV TW black one. If I end up getting a Poison Adrenal Rod. I've already decided I'm going to put a Steez on it. And I'll probably put... Uh, a regular steez just a svtw and then keep my two limiteds for possibility of a p5 maybe maybe not i'm thinking i'm not bougie enough to go 500 dollar rod that is only guaranteed for three years i would almost rather get an nrx plus that has a kind of a I think they kind of limit those nowadays, but sort of, uh, you know, you can almost use it for life kind of feel anyway before I would go that. I don't know, though. I, I think the Steez material, I think, might be a touch more to my liking. I'm not saying it's better, but the P5 has got that 5, and I believe the new Steezes are sort of like that, but I'm definitely not spending as much money as they want for a Daiwa Steez reel rod. I am not a fan. I've noticed that over the years. I've tried and I've liked a few different Daiwa rods, but I have not been overall impressed or overwhelmed or really a fan of Daiwa rods. I like the reels on the higher end ones over Shimano, but once you get down to that cheaper price point, I actually prefer the Shimano rods and reels over Daiwa. I'm not a, if you guys know the channel, I'm not a huge fan of Tatulas. I'm not just a lot of once you come to the cheaper stuff, I think Shimano does a little better job. When it comes to the high end bougie stuff, I think Daiwa takes the cake. The Steez rods, I'd rather I'd just spend my money on Mega Bass before I went with Daiwa stuff. Because I definitely like Mega Bass uh styling over all that. And I and if you guys know, then I'm gonna get out of here for sure. 
why did Megabass basically stop or slow down and how often they would come out with Daiwa? Did they have a did a Ito have a falling out with heads up at Daiwa? Because there for a while he was just chugging out. When Daiwa came out the new reel, it wasn't long. You know, he was coming out with some sort of reel, a mega bass reel there for a brief time period. So did he like go, no, I don't like the T Wing? Because they have some, like the rhodium, like there's some, but there's not a lot. So I was just curious if, you know, and I'm curious, like, what's, what's the plan? They came out the new Steez A2, which is ridiculously priced. It's higher. You can go right now and buy a brand new Steez SVTW, cheaper than you can get a, the Steez A new, the new one. And I know it's got boost spool and the new technology, but a magnesium frame reel Steez, in my opinion, should always be worth more money than uh, an aluminum one. I know there's probably several of you guys who are like, oh, the aluminum's better, it's tougher, more durable. Like, who says that's not as tough and durable? Like, in the, I haven't owned a ton, but the Steezes I have owned, I've never like stripped one out of any kind of way. Like, it's always worked for the, the way I use it for. I mean, I've gotten to two lists from guys that have, uh, Locked, basically took apart the drag stack, super glued it, cranked it down as tight as they could get it, and they spun the spool because you're not supposed to do that. And stuff like that. So I guess if you're that insane, crazy talking about it, then yeah, maybe the aluminum ones. But I'd never see to where that that... Now the CT is higher priced than that, but the older Steez is still available. So I don't know what they're coming up with. If, if they're just hold on. Because you never know what Dive is going to do. They still have the original uh, Tatula SVTW selling it with the newer SVTW because the old one just sells for a couple reasons. It just works. It's a good working reel, but it looks better than any Tatula they've came out with since. If they would just figure that out, uh, that their new Tatula frame until they went to the little 80s and 70s thing, the frame's not real comfortable. Honestly, it, it palms smaller, but uncomfortable compared to the older, like the Zillion. The new Zillion is a smaller, and that reel still, if, and if you guys are any question in like, well, what's Charlie's thoughts on what's still the best reel to get from Daiwa? It's clearly that Zillion. It's got all the technology that any of these newer, the Steez A, like, I think it's even light. It's lighter than the new Steez A. It's got... SV Boost, it's not a uh, MagForce Boost, but it's got the hyperdrive system. It's a uh, half the cost. It's the same. It feels, uh, if you guys remember right, I had two. One felt just as smooth as any of these steezes out of the box. The other one felt a little off, and I put the two bearings up in the because these all come with the bearings up in the line guide also, and I put bearings in that one. The other one I never did bother with because it still feels as good as these, and it doesn't have the two bearings up there. It's just one of those things if you, I don't know. Like me, you'll see me buy these. I'll never tell you that these are better than that New Zillion that's out. That New Zillion, other than the durability of the paint, I've come in on that, my fingers rub it off. Uh, peanut butter and jelly sandwich has a longer lifespan than the paint on a zillion, the new one. But still looks good. It'll it will start rubbing off on you for sure. So far the durability on this the Steez Limited. Ooh, look out, Jig. I'd say it's very good. Now I have seen some on eBay. They will get scratched and whatever, but it it definitely I love this reel. That's why I bought another one in the uh, seven to one ratio. As soon as I saw it popped up new, I've been eyeballing one. If you guys want one of these that has a few minor, it's got a little nick up here, a little scratch somewhere else. But by the time you buy it, a used one with a little few nicks off eBay, it's like four hundred sixty bucks, twenty five to ship, and then they charge you like thirty three dollars tax. So it's like five hundred twenty bucks. This was. I want to say 540 or 50 and the other one I just bought because they have come up the prices like I think they're catching on that uh, they can raise the prices because we're buying them because the end of the dollar is so different uh, I think I paid 560 for the one that's coming 
And like this one, I'll add the drag clicker and I'll probably just add knobs. I may change out the handle because the other one, if you guys don't know the difference other than just the, the gear ratio and the spool are different. And then I believe just this handle is black. So it's got a black spool, not this uh, shallow spool, like a uh, gunmetal-y color one. And then, uh, and it's black. And then the handle is black, is how you kind of just glance at them and tell them apart. But I'm tempted, I'm not gonna do it now. If I go out and I really like the way this reel works and I've switched that out, I think I'm gonna take that out and put it in a zillion and put the silver one in this. This thing actually would look better with the silver one in it and the zillion would look better with the gold. I think they're the same. I double check it before I go to tearing them all apart. But I think they're the same. Anyway, I gotta get out of here. Thanks for watching guys, stay tuned. Uh, more fishing videos coming and I'm gonna try to put it together next week probably right when i get off work so i can make sure everything comes through clear uh, we're going to set up the camera aiming right at the computer and i'm going to go through tackle warehouses line up a rod and reels uh what I, you know if a reel i think you should take a chance in digitaka because there's no warranty uh might look at ebay stuff just to give you guys an idea but like just give you some my thoughts on rod and reel combos and different price ranges from the cheap one. Maybe you just need to go get a Abu Garcia Max X or find an old Black Max. There's still stock of Black Maxes going around. There are new reels still, you know, the older reel Black Max still for sale. And put it with a lightning rod, and you got you can build a couple of awesome combos that way that get the job done for like under a hundred bucks rod and reel. Or all the way up to going and getting some steezes and throwing them on uh, Mega Bass Destroyer P5s or the older, uh, what they call the carbon tipped uh, destroyer lineup or the Valkyries. Or you can go all Shimano, go get you some Mataniums and get them on X Pride Bs. Or you can go with the Jackal uh, Poison Adrenas. Or you can go with the Corrados. Like the Corrado is probably that centered way to go if you just want to start building. And rod and reel arsenal that's all going to match. The Corrado lineup has probably as many rods as most other ones. And they definitely probably have more reels than any other reels you can get right now as Corrados. As far as the spectrum of what they can do. From the big like a swim bait Corrado to the little BFS Corrado. Right? But we're going to go more in depth on that. And then we'll include the Dobbins rods, the Kistler rods. My take on them. Like all what I would recommend. And then if any of them are closely priced, which one I would pick over the other. That kind of thing. Stay tuned though. We're already past an hour in this one and I got a bunch of work still to do. So get out. Go bass and bonsai this weekend. It is going down this weekend. Going to be mid to high 60s, uh, mid 70s on Sunday. It's going gonna, it's gonna to go down. Easter weekend. I'm not hunting Easter eggs. Or am I? I'm ha hunting bass eggs. Hopefully they haven't started spawning yet. I want my bass eggs to still be bundled up in that big ball of joy in the belly of a huge giant. Right? This could be the weekend where you guys could, if you can get out there, find time to get out on the water. Uh, if they're still just, you know, I think they're around here anyway. I think this last week the water has definitely went from below 55. It should be over 55 when we hit the water tomorrow. I haven't checked it for sure. And Char Nobody's giving me a report, Charles, on what the temp says. But I'll be fishing with Matt tomorrow. For sure. We're going in uh, Matt's pontoon. Should be Lake Lafayette. We're going to see what's up there as to what we do on Sunday. Uh, fishing. I'll be fishing somewhere again on Sunday. Not sure where. Could be back at Lake Lafayette. Could be at the reservoir. Could be all the way down at uh, Pond X. Who knows? But we'll be fishing. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm gone.